Welcome to the Embody Me Podcast. I'm your host, Amber Fortier, a digital entrepreneur, embodiment coach, and manifestation expert. My mission is to help success-driven, ambitious women stand in their power, embody their inner CEO, and manifest the successful business of their dreams. This podcast provides you with thought-provoking conversation, manifestation techniques, and wellness tips to turn your spiritual practices into a lifestyle, discover your inner rich babe, and massively transform your business, brand presence, and bank account. Let's effortlessly manifest opportunities and embody the rich, the confident, and the wildly successful version of yourself. Press play to dive in. Hello, everyone. I am so excited to be here with Sierra today. And we are going to be talking all about entrepreneurship and turning your passions into profit. Hi, Sierra. How are you? I am wonderful. How are you? I'm doing amazing. Thank you so much for taking time out of your very busy day to come have a chat with me and share your story. Absolutely. I am. I am so honored to be here. Thank you for having me. So much to do with just being an entrepreneur and kind of being all over the place. So sometimes it's good to take this time to just reflect and hopefully encourage others who, you know, are interested in entrepreneurship. Yes, I completely agree. As an entrepreneur, we can be so busy and so wrapped up into where we want to be and how much we want to make and all these other things. And it's so important to take a step back and just reflect on your life and you know how you got to where you are right now. So I would love for you to share with our audience your story of entrepreneurship. I know you were doing a lot of things and I would just love to hear more about how you got started and how you got to where you are right now. Absolutely. So when I started out, you know, I was a young mom. I had my daughter when I was 19. My first daughter, I have three. So I had her when I was 19 and I just kind of worked jobs, you know, here and there. And I always hated being away from my daughter, but, you know, how to do what I had to do. So I worked, you know, just tried to make a living for us. We were very poor, you know, low income, government assistance, all of that. So I just kind of climbed my way up the ladder, decided I wanted more, you know, for for my life and for my daughter. Got married when I was 23, had another child when I was 23, and then I got severely sick after I had my second daughter. So I developed what was called a press syndrome. It's basically when you have preeclampsia that turns into eclampsia that turns into the final stage before death, and that is press syndrome. Um, So I got super sick, started having seizures, memory loss, couldn't work, couldn't really do anything, um, which turned into really bad anxiety. So, you know, from all of that happening, now I'm a mother of two, I'm young, I'm married, I can't work. Me and my husband and our daughters had to move in um, to my mother's basement and kind of just start our lives all over again. Um, You know, I was 23 on nine different medications. Um, So I was sleeping a lot. It was just a very, very difficult time. So with me being home, I was off work for about nine months. Um, I got very, very attached with my children. And when I had to go back to work, it was very, very difficult for them. So that is what kind of started out this entrepreneurial journey for me, because every day when I would drop them off at daycare, especially my youngest daughter, she would scream and cry and throw fits and I would cry the entire drive to work. I started doing childcare out of my home so that I could be home with my children. And that was amazing. I got to care for others' children. I got to give them discounts because as a mom, a working mom, I understood what it meant to pay for childcare and how expensive it was. So I was able to help other families and also be there for my own children. And that I was so good at it that 
it started to, I started to have a waiting list of people who wanted me to keep their kids. So I started hiring others to come and work in my house with me. And we ended up moving out of our house and turning our entire house into a daycare center. So yeah, we got certified through the state of Ohio and we turned the house into a daycare. So we had, I had a three bedroom home. It was a split level. So the the bottom level was the infant area. Um, and then we had like a toddler room. Uh, we had a school age room. Like every room was dedicated to a specific age group. So that is kind of where it all started for me as an entrepreneur. I knew then like, hey, this I'm, I'm good at this, you know? And then I was able to not only provide for my family, you know, be able to move our family in and run a whole business where I had employees and I'm doing payroll now and marketing and advertising and it just really blew up. So that's where it kind of all started for me. And, you know, we had pretty bad credit before, you know, we purchased our home and everything. So I had already started fixing credit and kind of learning about credit and doing all of that. And that's when I found the passion for credit decided that I loved it. And I just did credit for free. I just was the credit lady and I would fix others credit and help my friends out and, you know, all of that. Um, and then that's how the credit business was birthed. <laughs> and I've kind of just been birthing businesses every since. So yeah, it started with a, a in-home daycare center. Then it turned into a credit repair company, which is now offering credit repair and business credit. I have homes that I flip. I have rental homes. We do Airbnb and we also do Toro. And now I am also business coaching. So <laughs> one home daycare center has turned into a whole just entrepreneur empire. Wow. I love your story <laughs> so much. And you know, I'm 23 right now. And I can just imagine me, you know, as you said, having these illnesses where you're like, what is going on? You have a small child. I also just got married. And I can just really put myself in your position and think, holy shit, how were you able to do it? You know, and during those times, you know, I'm sure it was really challenging for you. What was some of the biggest challenges I would say with, you know, your mindset and kind of figuring out where to go from there that you were facing when you were, you know, diagnosed and when you were in that, you know, bottom, the lowest of the low situation for yourself? Um, you know, honestly, it was prayer for me um, that kind of allowed me to overcome all of that. And honestly, when you're in a situation for me, I I've always been very independent. I've always decided this is what I want to do and I do it. So to be in a position to where you can only depend on God, it completely changes your life. It changes your outlook on everything. Because my daughter, when I had my first seizure, it was one week from the day that I had her. So I, I had been having this headache for like two or three days and I just couldn't shake it. I was taking Tylenol. I was taking ibuprofen and my headache just would not go away. So I woke up to feed her. And my husband had actually went back to work that day. So that was my first day home alone with both of the girls. And I woke up to feed her and I fed her and I laid her down. And as soon as I turned over, I started having a seizure. Like right after I laid the baby down, I started seizing. So it's weird when you have a seizure because you are conscious, you know that something is happening, but you can't control, you can't move your arms, you can't speak, you can't. So your mind is like yelling for help, but nothing is coming out, you know? So it's, it's really, really scary. And when I came to, you know, like my, my oldest daughter, she was three at the time and she was like crying and like freaking out. And there was nothing I could do. I had absolutely no control over my body. I had no control over anything. So all I could do was pray and depend on God and then just have faith that I was going to get better. You know, I always speak positivity. I'm not going to be like this forever. You know, I'm not going to have seizures for the rest of my life. I'm not going to, um, you know, not be able to go out in public and not be able to drive. Like I'm going to overcome this. So it's, it's really about your mindset and your drive to overcome the situation because I could have stayed there and, you know, I could have just given up. 
because it was hard. I, there were days I couldn't eat. There were days I called paramedics just out of fear that I was going to have a seizure or out of fear because I literally felt like I was dying every day. I was I, I, I was in the hospital after my first seizure. They admitted me. I was there for about three weeks and I really don't remember any of, of that, you know. So, you know, it was hard. But, you know, I had youth on my side, too. You know, being young, your body recovers better. And then, you know, just prayer and believing that God was going to bring me out of it. I haven't had a seizure in, you know, it's been a long, I'm 34 now. So <laughs> it's been a long time. But yeah, I'm just, you know, grateful for to be able to overcome that and just that drive to push forward. And that's something I hear from a lot of entrepreneurs in general is having that drive and telling yourself, just because this is where I am right now, I am not always going to be here. I'm not always going to be broke and struggling and in this bad situation. Like this is only temporary and telling yourself that and repeating that and making that so real that, you know, within like without a shadow of a doubt that you are going to be okay and things are going to get better is such a great and powerful mindset to have regardless of your situation. So I think that is so, so powerful. And I think I really loved you know, with your story of how you've realized, okay, taking my kids to daycare is not working. They miss me. I'm crying every day going to work. It's expensive as hell for childcare as well. Oh my so- gosh. Crazy, right? Like sometimes you might as well just stay home and not work because all the money you make at work is going straight to childcare. So I totally can see why so many mothers are stay at home moms because sometimes it just does not make sense. And I think it's so amazing how you took that perceived challenge and you said, you know what? I'm just going to do this myself. And you realized you had a passion for it. And you realized that this could be something bigger than you initially thought. And can you tell me more about, you know, your, your process of just going from being at home with your kids to babysitting and watching other kids as well? What was that journey like? Did you expect it to grow into the little empire that it did grow into? Honestly, I knew that I still needed to make some money. Like my husband clearly, you know, made enough money to to kind of cover the bills. But I I always wanted to be a provider. I always wanted to to add additional income. So what I did, I took a vacation at my job and I said, if I'm going to be a stay at home mom, I have to at least have five children that I am caring for to supplement my income. Um, so within that time that I took off of work, I was able to get on Craigslist and post my little ads. And I got three children that was like, you know, their families was like, hey, we'll have them start immediately. And in, in this week time, it's so crazy <laughs> because this was probably in 2013 that I did this. So in the week time, like I went out to like, um, what's that child place? Once upon a child. And I got like all these cribs and like toys and like pack and plays and diaper tables or whatever, like all of this stuff and like completely remade my lower level into like this whole daycare place. So I did all of this within a week's time, posted my flyers and got three families to agree to let me watch their kids. So um, that was kind of like the process of, of getting it started. So so I just called my job and was like, I'm not coming back, which is horrible. I don't recommend anyone doing that. <laughs> um, but yeah, I was like, if, if this works, I'm not, I'm not coming back. So that, that's kind of what happened. Um, so I had three kids for about two weeks. Um, and then I got the other two families uh, that following week. So I had my five. I was good. Um, you know, I was able to be at home with the kids. I was able to be home, you know, helping other families. And everything I do, I try to do it in excellence. So I had the little sheets that the kids took home every day that says, hey, this is how many times I was changed. This is what I was fed. This is what I ate. Um, parents really, really love that. I also um, was very hands-on with the kids. You know, we did activities. You know, we had music days. We had story time. We had circle time. We had 
playtime. Um, I would do field trips with them. I went out and bought a minivan so that we could go and do activities and things like that. So just given that level of excellence, I think that that's how, you know, people started to say, hey, my babysitter is amazing. And it just kind of spread that way. And then once I got certified, because I wasn't certified at first, but once I got certified and then, you know, even more people found out, it just kind of took off. (laughs) And that's so amazing because, you know, really hearing your story, you had an idea, you made a plan and you're like, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this to the best of my ability. I'm not going to half-ass it. I'm not going to dip my toe in it. I'm just going to go all in. And because you went all in, it worked out so well for you. And this is what I tell all of my clients and my friends. It's like, okay, if you have an idea, I need you to commit. I need you to really make that decision in your mind that this is what I want to do and really stick to it. Because if you said, yeah, I kind of want to do this, but at the same time, you didn't really have the idea that you wanted to quit your job or you wouldn't have gotten any of the equipment or you wouldn't have any cribs, it wouldn't be real for you. And because you did all these things, you were like, okay, this is what I'm doing. And you made your mind and you made it work. And I love that so much. And honestly, you know, I think that sometimes when entrepreneurs want to start a business, they think that everything has to be perfect. Sometimes you just have to do it. Like when I took vacation from my job, I was not ready to run a daycare center. Like I said, I was running around, you know, buying stuff. I was at Target. I was getting house baby proof and all of that. But I just kind of jumped out there and did it. And sometimes that's what you have to do. That's the best way. Like sometimes being overly prepared can hinder you, can slow you down. And then you you kind of done too much or you spent too much money. And now, you know, the return may not be what you thought it was going to be. And you've wasted a lot of time and energy. So I am always like, just jump out there. That's my motto. And that's my motto too. When I look at myself and the businesses that I've started, I also just jump right into it. You have an idea, you just feel in your body, like, does this feel right? Does this feel like a good idea? And if it does run with it and trust it because it will work out one way or another, as long as you just trust in God, the universe or whatever you believe in, but just trust that you were given these ideas for a reason. So I love hearing how you really just trusted your intuition on that. And Tell me more about your process of, you know, flipping homes and doing that. Like another question I have for you also, actually, is your husband, you know, are you guys business partners? Does he still work his other job? Like how has that, you know, grown your relationship together as well? Oh my gosh. So business has actually been very hard on my marriage because my husband does completely different things than me. So he has like a car dealership and then he also flips homes. But my businesses are more subscription based. When I do child care, that's guaranteed funds every week. You know, my credit repair business, that's a monthly subscription. So that's guaranteed income. You know, when you're selling cars, you have to actually like put money up and hope that someone purchases a car. And even, you know, with flipping houses, you purchase this house, you have to rehab it and put all this money out and then hope that you can sell it for what you want to sell it for. Um, So it's actually been, uh, it's been a gift and a curse for us because yes, we have more time to spend together. And, you know, we, we have these businesses and we invest and we do things together. But sometimes I want him to do things my way and he wants me to see things from his perspective. So it's definitely been challenging, but it's been great too, because we spend more time together. We spend more time with the kids and then I can learn from him and he can learn from me. So it it kind of balances itself out, but definitely, you know, being an entrepreneur and being married to an entrepreneur can have its challenges for sure. Yeah, I can imagine, especially if he's, as you said, has his own businesses doing things his way. And he's in a completely different line of work. And, you know, child care. And are you, are you still doing the child care business still? No, I am not. So I had um, to let go of the child care business because I just didn't have the time for it anymore. Um, and I completely like phased myself out. 
My mom took it over and she's just kind of letting it go by the wayside because she's getting older and it's a lot on her to manage that. So I, I don't have a child care center anymore. I think about it often, like oh, sometimes I just like I should just buy a daycare center and just, you know, go back to to what I love and all of that. But it's a lot managing uh, a daycare and dealing with the children and the parents. Sometimes it can be overwhelming. I think that now what I'm doing is a lot easier for me to manage. So what advice do you have for other entrepreneurs or for people who, you know, they started out doing a job or a business because it was their passion, but it doesn't light them up anymore. They don't feel excited. They're not excited to go to work. They don't really enjoy what they're doing. What kind of advice can you give them to feel okay in transitioning and into doing something else? I honestly, Please do not believe that if you don't love something or you don't have a passion for it, that you should continue to do it because you're not going to give it the same value and attention that you did before. I honestly think that sometimes it's okay. And even with me in the daycare center, once I started to lose that fire for childcare, you know, hiring other people who had the fire, you know, who had the patience, who had the time, that worked out well. I could still have my day daycare center. It could still be my baby. And I could love it even more because I'm not necessarily in it day to day dealing with, you know, kids vomiting and changing diapers and, you know, uh, temper tantrums in the morning. Um, but I could just come in and just be the loving, you know, little daycare mother and, you know, hugging all the babies and, you know, just kind of oversee it. So I definitely think delegating is huge as an entrepreneur. You cannot do everything and you will get burned out if you try to. So I am always big on delegating, you know, hiring staff. And if you have a business that, you know, is like digital or online or, you know, maybe there's some back office things that, you know, you could have someone to do. You could hire like a virtual assistant or someone for not as much as it would cost you to hire a person that's in-house, but still get the same results, maybe even better. So I'm all about delegating. I delegate on all of my businesses um, at this point because it takes a lot to be a boss. It honestly does. You know, I have to make sure all of my employees are good. I have to make sure the expenses are where they need to be. I have to make sure bills are being paid. I have to do a lot of things. So I think that, you know, as, as your business grows, it's definitely best to delegate, to take time for yourself. Normally on Wednesdays are my self-care days. So and sometimes taking time for myself is just taking a training or listening to a podcast or, you know, something to where I can just listen and receive because, you know, as entrepreneurs, sometimes we're always giving, we're always putting out, we're always helping others. Sometimes we just need someone to pour into us. So definitely, you know, just delegating, taking those self-care days and, and just breathing sometimes so that you can and can come up with new ideas and, and just be your best self. I totally resonate with that. And I teach that so much as well, that we have to fill our own cups first. And as you said, you know, if you're not enjoying your business or if you're feeling overwhelmed, you're not going to give it the same energy that you would. And your energy really is what magnetizes your clients and opportunities to you. So in order to really grow your business, it's so important to make sure you're taking time for yourself, whether that means delegating or or, you know, closing a side of your business or pivoting or doing whatever you need to do to really make that feel right. So thank you so much for sharing that. Absolutely. I am a person who is all over the place. So I constantly have to back myself down and say, OK, wait, you we're working on this. This is what you need to work on, because I get like that quite often. I get very ADHD. Where I'm just like, oh, my gosh, what in the world? Yeah. Don't don't overthink it. Don't overdo it. Just let things flow and and find your joy and your why. Always make sure you remember your why. I love that. Thank you so much for being here. Do you have any last tips or pieces of advice you'd like to share for our listeners? I would just say always follow your heart and make sure you put yourself first. So you can do anything as long as you can actually, you can physically do it. So you have to put yourself first at all times um, and never let anyone laugh at your dreams. 
Anyone that laughs at your dreams, you use that as motivation to go full force because you can do anything. We all have the same amount of time every single day. It's just about what you're doing with it. You know, plan your day accordingly, plan your week out, budget, you know, write out your meal plan, be accountable for every second of your day and for every dime that you have, save your money. You know, all of these things are important to be successful. You have to be structured in life and you have to to take care of yourself. Thank you so much for sharing that. And thank you so much for being here. And once again, thank you so much, Sierra, for being here. It was amazing to have you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I hope you enjoyed this juicy episode of the Embody Me podcast. If you love this episode, please give us a five-star rating and share it with the woman in your life who needs to hear this. And don't forget to subscribe so you can keep up with all of our upcoming releases. I cannot wait to catch you in the next next episode.